What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and today we're going to be doing quite a bit actually. We're going to actually be messing around with the mini shop that we created or uh, that I've created for you guys. And we're going to actually be including Mon Mongoose, creating our first model, our first schema, uh, creating an item management system, implementing all the database functions for that item management system. It's going to be quite a bit guys, so I hope you like what you're about to see um before we get started i did want to go over the application with you guys because we're not going to be creating you know pug or i'm using pug by the way yeah pug is very old but still pretty good anyways we're gonna we're gonna be using uh i'm not gonna be talking to, talking to you guys about express and node.js if you don't know what express or node.js i have a full course about that so we're not going to go over the routes or anything like that so Let's just go over the things right now. All right, so I have a server right here, a server folder. Client doesn't really do anything, it's just CSS. So our server folder has a bin folder, which is our server uh, configuration. You should already know that. Our config, this is basically our global configuration uh, file. As you can see, I only have two things in here, our application name and our logger, and I'm using Bunyan for that. Our models, we got mongoose folders and SQLite because we're going to be doing both of them on this video, like I said. And we have our routes, just mapping out our routes. And then next to JS, it's just mapping it out. Our services, our basket service, item service. Basically, services is just like, hey, if they want to delete a item from a service, well, we need to get that service. We need to create a service that will go into the database and delete that one service or that one uh, item, you know what I'm talking about. So those are services, just going into the database, getting one, getting all, deleting one, deleting all, all that stuff, right? So we have that for each one of these, and we also have our views. I'm not going to go over that. That's pretty much simple, and that's in our app. It's just our application configuration file. That's it. That's basically it, guys. Very uh, quick and dirty, but let's get right into what we wanted to, and that's uh, getting into or what's it called? Oh yeah, <laughs> adding MongoDB and Mongoose to our project and messing around with that. So I already have installed or in package.json, JSON, you should see Mongoose, which, so yeah, I have everything installed, so don't worry about that. All you have to do is npm i and be done with that so you can start everything. All right, in here, I'm going to add a MongoDB, MongoDB global variable, and this is going to be the string, and this is going to be our DNS. It's going to be an object and, and DSN, DSN, and it's going to be Mongo, you should already know, MongoDB, colon, forward slash, forward slash, local host, colon, I put mine to 37017, and that's basically it. Now, if you go inside of bin, right here, this is where we're going to configure our server configuration. This is where we're going to add our Mongo connection. So we are going to need to const grab mongoose so equals require mon no not mongoose damn it i, I really like it when it <laughs> does it the first mon, there it is that's what <laughs> i'm super lazy and we're going to do mon mongoose dot connect and we already have our config in here, so I don't have to include that. So I'm gonna say config config dot mongodb dot dsn, and this is a promise. So we could do a dot then and we're gonna just say, hey, we're gonna log out log. We're using our logger. That's why I'm saying log dot oops dot info and i'm just gonna say successfully connected to mongo db and since we're using this log i need to move this up no i don't want to copy it to god what am i doing what am i doing moving this up up here there we go all right, now let's see if this works. I already have a script for it. It's just npm start. So npm start 
All right, there we go. Successfully connected to MongoDB. And we're listening on 3000. Awesome, awesome. Now it's time for us to create our very first schema. Now let's go to models. Get rid of some of these mongoose. And we're going to create an item schema. So before we do that, we do need, or you could use ES6 if you want to import, but I've done, I did it this way. So consistency is what matters. It's going to equal uh, require mongoose. And down here, we're going to do another cost. And I'm going to call this item schema. Schema. And we're going to set that equal to mongoose.schema. There it is. And it is going to be an object, or we're going to be passing in objects. Remember, mongoose is object oriented. So, all right. Basically, a schema is you're just defining how the item is going to look like should it have a, a picture should it have a title should it have a you know a badge a discount badge anything that you want to define it as you want to just define it as is what what is an item for our case an item is going to need to have a SKU number right and I'm, don't worry I'm going go over it oops let me just do a comma it's going to have a SKU number It's going to have a name and it's going to have a price. It needs to have a price. It needs to have a name. And optional, I could have other things in here if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. But for right now, what it, what an item is for me is a SKU number, a name, and a price. All right? So this is where we're going to actually define, okay, what is a SKU? Well, a SKU, I'm going to put it in objects. The type is going to be number. And is it required? I'm going to just say required equals true. Yes, it is required. And is the index, is this index? This index needs to be unique. So I'm going to say unique. True. Now, what about name? Well, name, the type, is not going to be a number. It's actually going to be a string. Is it required? Yes, for me it is, you don't have to, but I'm gonna say yes. And index, yes, we want to have an index and we're gonna say true to that. Now remember, the reason I say unique up here, we do need to have an index, but we want it to be unique. This SKU can't be uh, a same. Let's say you're adding a, I don't know, a bubble gum with the SKU number, right? And let's say you have a coffee mug. If that coffee mug has the same SKU number, well, what's the price of that? What's the true price of that? Because the coffee mug and the bubble is going to have different prices, but you're using the SKU number, the same SKU number, right? So you want that to be unique. You want it to be, well, yeah, unique, like I said. <laughs> All right, for our price, I'm actually going to be copying this. And it is going to be a number. Required is true, but we don't want an index for that. We really do not want it. There's no reason to for us to have an index. Now, one last thing before we actually finish up. Yeah, that's simple. Guys, schemas isn't that hard to create, nor is it hard to connect to a database. What is hard, and I'm pretty sure most of, the, of you are having trouble with this, is actually the architecture of your project, how you should map it out, where, where things go. I think that's the real problem people are having. And I might actually do a video on that's actually a pretty good video on that. Anyways, uh, before we finish this off, I want to say over here are for our last argument, Argument, I'm going to say timestamp. Stamps. I'm going to set that to true. Now, what does timestamps uh, actually do? I was getting an error. What does timestamps actually do? Well, timestamps is going to give you another property like SKU name price. It's going to give you two extra properties. It's going to give you a created at property and also a updated at property. So it's going to give you a timestamp once this item was created. And then if it ever is updated, it's going to give you a timestamp of when it was updated. Okay. All right. Now that we have our schema, we're going to do a module dot exports. I'm going to just export that thing. And we're going to just say uh, module export mongoose dot model. And we're going to name this model an item or item. Sorry. And then we're going to be using the item schema for that model. 
So one thing to note uh, is that Mongoose actually maintains a global connection object for us. So if we require this model, it will use the database we've already set up. This means that there is no need to pass around the connection object itself within our application since it's global. And this is why Mongoose is very good to use. All right. By the way, guys, we already have a user schema or a uh, yeah, schema and model is basically the same thing, but the only difference is, and I'm not going to go over this. Well, I am going to go over it. I'm just not going to be like, hey. But anyways, look, as you can see, our user schema, we have, we want an email and a password. You should, you should already know what this is. Lowercase true. There's a lot of little properties that you could add in here. Uh, don't worry. I will have a doc, like I said. I think I said it. Down in the description below on what else you could do with these things. There's a tons of things you could do with this. I want this to be lowercase and I want trim. I want the white space to be gone on both sides. Password, all that, timestamp true. The thing about schemas or models, or schema, sorry, schemas, is that you could actually have methods. Schemas do have predefined methods that you could use. And you could actually, um, what's it called? Make your own methods, all right? So let's, let's go right here. For our pre- Every time you're, we're going to save, we want to do something before we actually save it into the database. And that's just doing bcrypt. We're just, you know, um, hashing out our password so that way it's, it's, um, when, you know what I'm talking about, right? God, I can't even think about the word right now. It's, uh, secret? Hashed? You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Encrypted. <sighs> It's encrypted, password's encrypted. That's what we're doing with Bcrypt. I'm not gonna explain what Bcrypt is, but just know that you could do stuff before a certain event, in this case, the save. We're just uh, encrypting our password and then we're gonna save it. And then over here, I actually, this is a uh, method that I actually created. And you could just do that by saying, hey, user schemas.methods and then add your own method here. In this, in this case, we named it compare password and you could, do a function, uh, whatever you want, our callback, you know, and this is just basically comparing our passwords once we unencrypt it and just checking if that password is the same. So I'm just saying that, like I said, there's a lot of things you could do with schemas and I will have a doc down below. Now let's actually focus on the services of each one of these things for, in this case, items, we're going to just focus on the service for items. So over here in services, the item service, no, not the basket service, the item service. And also we need to do some stuff inside of routes. And there's going to be an item inside of item index.js right here. I did council log some of the stuff. So that way uh, we could actually, when we, when the time comes, we uncomment these and use them. So right now I'm going to get rid of this. And this is just a route for the item ID. Getting rid of this and oops. Not that uncommenting the stuff. All right. And I noticed that I have a next right here, but I don't have it right here. So next, and I'm just going to uncomment all these things out. So that way we can work on them and getting rid of this. Uh, where's my right here. And then here's our delete item. Uh, why is oh, return? That's why. Okay. So right now what we have is our, our get item, get a specific item route. And then we have a save or update a route. And we're actually checking, Hey, um, if it's a save or an update kind of thing. So you could check that out if you want to, I'm not going to go over it. Like I said, this is not about that. Where is it at? Right here. I might go over it in a bit. I might, yeah, I'm gonna go over it. It'll be better if I go over it. And then here's our delete item route, okay? But first of all, let's actually create the services. And before we do that, we do need to import, as you can see right here, where is it at? Item service. We're using item service, which is, we don't have it right now, but it's going to be uh, mapping to our services and item service JS right there. So we do need to get that. So const item service is going to equal require I don't know how many we're in it's going to be inside of 
services slash item service. All right, now that we have that, let's go into item service and actually create our functions for all that stuff. So the first service, as I remember, was our item, get item. Why do I have that? Like that, our get item. So we're gonna have to actually grab um, a get all because we're actually using in here, we're actually using a get all function and then get one. So, and we're gonna include our, uh, our model. So item model. We're going to set that equal to require models slash mongoose slash item. And like I said, when, when we're using the model, it gives us that global variable. So we don't have to connect to our database right here and then search for it. We could literally just search for it right now and it's connecting it to it, to it globally. Right? So we don't have to connect to our database again. All right. So, since I'm using async await, I'm going to use async and we're going to create a function. I'm going to say get all for this function. All right, we're going to return and this was actually pretty easy to implement for get all anyways. We're going to say item model dot find. And what exactly do we want to find? Well, we're not going to pass in anything for our query parameter because we want to grab everything that comes back. Sorry. And then, sorry. And then we're going to dot sort. Sort it. We're going to sort it by created. Created at. And I'm going to do negative one. Now, what does negative one means is basically is going to do it from descending order. Okay. Descending order. And that's basically it for get all. It's pretty easy. I'm telling you now let's do the exact same thing for get one. Get one. So we're going to return item model and then find one. What? Oh, no wonder. Find one and Actually, I don't want to do this right here. We actually do want to send in a query parameter. And this is where we do not leave this blank. We actually want to send it in. What do you, what exactly are we finding or what is the query that you want to find? We want to find the actual item with the ID of item ID. And this is being passed in as you can see over here item one or get one every time you call one we're, we're get we're passing in a a parameter and over here we're grabbing it and we're just like hey we just want to find that one item that has this item id that's basically it for that now what was the next one it was our save and update so let's create those copy this so async i'm gonna say create because that's what we're using over here. Where is that? Um, create and our update function. So create. So create is pretty easy once again. Data. So over here, let me actually explain. Over here, when we're actually creating something, we're actually passing in an object with the SKU name and price. Okay. So over here, once we get that object, or once we get that data, which is in object form, right? Over here, get rid of this. And what I'm going to do with that data, I'm going to say const item. I'm going to save that data item is going to equal into a new instance of the item model. And we're just passing in that data. And then we're going to return uh, item dot save because we're actually saving that item now. And that's pretty much it guys. Now you might be wondering where well, you're not doing any checks. Well, we actually are doing some checks right here. We're doing some checks. We need to have the SKU name and price. If we don't have that, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to just put a push a message saying, Hey, warning, please enter SKU name and price. And then we're going to just redirect them to the Adam item 
uh, page again so that way they could redo that and enter all the things that they need to now once that that's entered then we'll go over here right here where we will just create our item and then if not that then we'll just update the item and basically we're just hey if there's no existing item we now want to create a new item object okay now I'm just grab this and do the update version of that update and we are going to be getting for update down here we're actually going to be getting an item ID and then item data all right so because for update obviously you need to update a specific item so in that case we do need an item ID and also we also need the data that comes in to actually save it or update it right so this is going to be a bit different so since we already need an update that means that we need to fetch that update so we could actually use the get one function up here so I'm gonna say const item equals get rid of this await so we're gonna be waiting for that data so get one and I'm gonna be passing in the item ID now just in case we don't find uh, we don't find if there is no item no item item okay if there is no item simply we're going to just throw a new error error I'm going to say could not find the the requested item that is it now, if we do find it, then we're going to actually have to, since this is being passed in as an object, we're going to have to actually loop through that and then resave it into this item object that came back. So object dot keys, and we've already gone over this, or you should know what this is, data, and then dot for each. For each key that we get all I'm going to be doing is saying hey the item and then key we're going to save that and we're going to save it equal to the data key and that's basically it and then we're going to return save return item dot save now let's focus on our um, delete route right here. <clears throat> and notice that we're just passing in the item ID in here. Okay, so let's just do that really quick. I'm actually going to copy this one. And then I'm going to say remove. That's what we called it, right? Yeah, dot remove. And then the query that we want we're actually passing in a full query right there <laughs> yeah we are actually passing in a full query underscore ID rec params item ID and what I want to do here is get rid of this const result is going to equal to we're gonna be awaiting because we're gonna be using one of our functions um, not one of our functions one of the model functions or mogus model functions so the item dot remove hey this is web dev journey future web dev journey anyways uh and uh it seems that dot remove doesn't want to work for me anyways it might work for you but it didn't want to work for me and i wasn't going to spend my time figuring out why it didn't want to work so i just moved on to another method there's tons of methods to remove things and I just did find by ID and remove and this one worked just fine and I needed to return the actual uh, object dot keys result dot length I just wanted to see what was the length of the object that was, that was being returned because we still need to figure out if it's zero or more than zero right so there you go guys uh, I will have this at the side so that way you could just uh, reference it um, but let's continue on with the video thanks and we want to remove the query now we could have done it two ways uh, I just wanted I wanted to show you another way how we could have done it so we could have just passed in the item ID right here and in here what we what we would have had to do was 
the object underscore ID and item ID, just like we did up here like that. But instead of just passing the item ID, I actually passed in the full query. So that way we could just pass in the query. Let me control Z this, there we go. And then what I want to do is return. Um, I was looking at what I need to do. The reason why is because we're using zero. So I need to pass back or return an actual number, how many records were deleted. And we could do that by saying result dot deleted count. And that's it. That's all the services that we needed. Like I said, it's not that hard guys. What it is hard is this part right here. Uh, we do need to export it though. So module dot export. I'm just export the whole thing. So get all get one create uh, what was the update? Yeah, update and then remove remove and bam. All right. Now that we have all the services, let's actually go through this just pretty quick because like I said, I'm not trying to uh, uh, take too long on the router or express kind of things. So right here, once we do a, once we get an item ID, all we're going to be doing is awaiting item service dot get one, which is going to go and grab something from the database, that one item. All right. And, uh, in our update or save an update, like I said before, we're just going to be creating a, a, uh, item. If one doesn't already exist, if one already exists, that means that we're going to be updating an item and don't worry, I'll show you what exactly what, what exactly we mean when we say, Hey, uh, when there is no existing item, uh, we now want to create a new one. I'll, I'll show you what exactly what I mean. All right. And over here, our delete is pretty much simple. If there, if the result that's come back saying zero, that means that, Hey, there wasn't no documents in that with that. And we're going to say, Hey, result is result return zero deleted documents. And if we do delete a, um, a, what's it called? What's it called? An item. There we go. If we do delete an item, um, and I'm checking if there was an error of deleting an item, an item, we're going to just say, Hey, there was an error while deleting this item, uh, log fatal. There we go. And redirect it to the Adam item page. Now, if it is successful, then we're going to say, Hey, the item was successfully deleted and then redirect them again to the admin item. Let me control C this. Yes. Cause we want to run it one more time. Hopefully there's no, there, that, well, there wasn't no errors. Does it actually go to localhost 3000 localhost 3000 and check it out. So we're going to click on items or where is it at manage items and let's create one our SKU. I'm going to say one, two, three, mm. undies and the price is, well, I'm going to say uh, 199 submit and the item was created successfully as you can see right here. Pretty cool, right? Now, if we actually try to do one, two, three, one more time, like I said, in the, in the schema, we want this to be unique. So we shouldn't be able to do this. So if I submit it, there was an error while saving the item, which is correct. Cause we have a different or a SKU number, the same SKU number anyways. Now notice that over here, when I said, Hey, uh, if there is no existing item, how are we checking that? Well, if we edit an item right here, Actually, it will be best if I showed you in the pug what I'm doing. If I go to views and then add an item right here. All right. So notice that down here in our input, our form, we have an input and it's hidden. And in here, I just literally, uh, put, if there is an item, if there are items, we actually pushed in the value item in the item ID into the name item ID, right? And then once we, uh, you know, send it out, this is actually going to be part of that form item ID. And if we actually have item IDs, this is going to be, um, what's it called? Populated. And I can show you over here, inspect 
let's go to card block right here see right here value and then we got that random string let me actually open that up more or there we go see we got that string right here that's because we edited an item now if i go to manage items and then you see right here we don't have no item id actually selected but once i select an item let me create another one four five six socks and then seven eight nine four i don't know submit we created one now check this out if i right now we don't have that we don't have a value so if i edit an item and then check it out one more time right here we actually have that item and that's how we're checking hey uh over here where is it at? oh over here if there's no item id then that means that we're actually going to be creating a item now if there is an item id which is if else here it is we're going to be updating an item okay and that's basically the whole gist of it and that's the end of this video guys honestly it has it was pretty cool right let me delete an item delete an item oh there was an error deleting this item well that was the base of this that was it for this video guys i hope you liked the video what we did in this video just full recap we included mongoose we connected to our database we created a schema and model and we actually made functions for our item management system which is pretty cool you could check all those out right now and i would highly advise you to check those how i did those um right now before the project gets even bigger just try to figure out this is a great great time for you to actually get some practice on reading other people's code i'm giving you a chance to read my code to see hey how exactly how i did this thing so that way once we progress in the in the in the series you're going to understand okay I understand why he's doing that and the way why he's doing it that way so that was it for this video guys i hope you liked it and i will see you in the next video thanks bye